So Notion have added some new AI property abilities. In today's feature, we're going to show you how they work and how I built this fantastic table very quickly using AI. Now, this isn't brand new. Coda released something fairly similar about two months ago, and it introduced ways that you can use this in the properties and formulas area. But naturally, Notion has jumped on board this has been something I've been saying for a while. I've been saying properties is the place to go with AI, and I, I can imagine how hard it is to build. Today's video, we're gonna look at this and how to build it, and how to get used to this new AI properties area. So welcome, my name is Francesco. I hope you have checked out Toolfinder. If you're in the hunt for a productivity tool, go to find uh, go to toolfinder.co, and you'll find everything there, full guides, full lists, loads of stuff coming out. So do check it out. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. If you're in the hunt for one, if not, there are some gonna be some great guides there to help you go further with each tool. So here we are, you need an AI account for this, which means you need to pay the additional per month. I think it's like $10 per month extra. Um, I'll have to double check on that, but it gives you unlimited AI. So I'm gonna show you how you could potentially go about doing this and where to find it. The first thing to do is go ahead and create a database of some format. In this case, I could be like, okay, um, let's go ahead and create a table view. And I made one down here, so I'm gonna go and go ahead and press table view, and I'm gonna go to new database. Now, in this case, I create a few places to go. I'm gonna show you something very similar um, and just call it places to go to. I'm gonna hide that so you get the full uh, nature of it. So one of the things you could and want to do is make a bucket list, um, you know, um, Sao Paulo, this is just gonna be awful me spelling it. I'm really gonna start with something easy and go with Venice like the one before. Uh, maybe I want to go Birmingham, UK, and maybe I also, I don't know why, I wouldn't wanna go to Venice and Birmingham. It's just like uh, two very obscure places. And then I'm gonna to go to, um, I don't know, London. Let's just keep it nice and simple. So obviously you've got traditional, you would maybe go and fill these out, these traditional properties like you would with many other Evernote accounts, not Evernote, Notion. I've just done an Evernote video, so give me a break. So what we can see here is a new properties area and you have three core properties, AI summary, AI key information and AI custom autofill. For some reason, it, it, I wanna show you the autofill uh, first thing because it seems to be the only thing that's trying to work for me here. But if I, for example, wanted to give it a prompt based on the information I have there, I can basically do that. So in this case, I might say, um, use name and uh, give me the country uh, it is in. I'm gonna try it on the view. So there you go, you can see that the prompt has come through, Venice is a city in Italy, Birmingham is a city, you know, it's getting the right things, but I just wanna refine my prompt a little bit further and I might wanna say, just the country name. I won't say please, although you should probably say please. <laughs> um, and as you can see, it started to do that, but naturally is done, is, is a city in Italy. So you might wanna just say, give me the country name and press try. There we go, that's a little bit better, still being a little bit fluffy. Um, I think it's because I put uh, Birmingham like this, if I try it again, as you can see, it, it just refines it a little bit more uh, without the <laughs> uh, name of the city. <laughs> Let's try that. There we go, finally. So that, that you may need to refine it a little bit more. And what I can go do, do is go back and actually go into this text property and because it's an AI generated property, I can I can see that there that it's got AI next to it, but I'm gonna say uh, country. So you could start building up a pretty cool database here of, of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this property. And uh, what I'm gonna do as well is I'm going to go and do autofill and give me the emoji. I'm just testing the abilities of getting emoji for the country this is associated with. I don't know whether it does do this, but there we go. So that's quite cool. Um, I'm playing around with it, giving you an example of what it could be. And you can see here that you can do that. Um, now, if you wanna update on all pages, you can do, and you can have this auto syncing ability, which means it always updates. 
So what I might want to do here is give it a prompt like, give me five tourist locations I should visit for this city and try. Um, so it's all automatically doing it as you can see if I went out of this and um, press save. It's given me a pretty extensive list, but what I might want to do is just refine this a little bit. Um, keep to a short list without descriptions. Try on this view. There we go. There we go. It started to give me a little bit of a better list here. So, you know, like it, it, it sounds weird. I lived in Birmingham for a year, but it just is like the Piazza San Marco, you know, uh, <laughs> Gran Canal. And it's like Cabri World. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking a mic out. Uh, it sounds like I'm taking a mic, I am. <laughs> um, but you can start to see small things here, like, okay, it matters what you prompt it. As many people are starting to get used to with AI, it's really about what you prompt it with. So uh, remove anything but bullet points. Let's see if that improves it. There we go. So it's giving me slightly better structure here. So it really will take time to refine, but if I go ahead and, and maybe put, um, <laughs> I'm gonna put Swindon. Um, logically, it should auto update on everything. So here we go, update all pages. I'm guessing that's how it works. There we go, so it's updating all pages. And as you can see, it's really like, the country name for Swindon is the United Kingdom. It's not necessarily following the good rule. It's probably my prompting, but you can see here that obviously it's brought in a different flag as well, but it's given me the places I want to go. So it might need refining um, for here, just, <laughs> just country name. And let's see whether it does that. Um, it didn't, <laughs> but okay. So it's probably just me. There we go. It's really screwed up now. So uh, maybe I need to go back to the drawing board with that. But you can start to see the abilities with this and how it can potentially be used. But one of the things that a lot of people are going to like is that these are going to hopefully be drawn into tags and things like that. Because the benefit with it being drawn into tags, like um, say I went ahead and created all these places, they could all become tags and they could all become a way for me to search within the database. So there is an ability here that they are, they have that could be great. Um, one of the things that I think it could potentially do is be able to help with certain workloads of like um, auto updating them. So for example, if it if if you had like a, a status, then it could update it based on that. So let's say I just had some basic statuses for here. Um, let's just say they think it's um, like, I don't know, take status and give an update on the progression. Let's see whether it does something like this um, over here. So there we go. So if you had a lot of information, um, so you can see the status has associated with that. It's giving like an update for the status, but you could apply a similar concept to that in the sense that you could refine it even further. Like, um, let me have a think. <laughs> okay. So I've just had a little bit of a play and I really refocused my attention towards the uh, places. And obviously one of the things you can start to do is correlate any of the places to things that you have already on the different areas. So here, what I did is I said, give me a recommendation of how long to spend in each location. So I'll show you that prompt. You can see here, I said, take the items in the list of tourist locations. Give me a rough estimate of what to spend on each time. So, you know, two, three hours in the Birmingham Museum, you know, four, three to four hours at Tower of London Bridge, etc. Then what I did is I, I said, if I was traveling from Devon, by car, how long would it take me to get to the city? And you can see that it's all giving me prompts based on that. So you can really refine this into much more detail with the AI, but the fact that you can do this with properties really does help, especially when you're, um, say you took some really rough meeting notes, you could really help refine them uh, within the page and really give them a bit more detail. I think Notion's next step is to convert this into here and somehow 
make that a lot easier to be able to manage. But for people creating databases, one thing we were doing with Toolfinder originally is creating these databases. This could be a little bit of a saving grace to summarizing information that's part of this. If you're doing some market research and you wanna be able to save some time about what they're all about to present the information to a client or a customer, this could save you a bit of time. Obviously checking the AI based recommendations from generative because it's obviously a little bit of a minefield at the moment in terms of picking the right stuff that works for you. So this gives you an idea of how the feature works. Um, and obviously I think that'll expand into the different properties that Notion offer. And I think um, that with these other properties, like, okay, find me the URL for the Google Maps, um, check box off if I mention this or something like that. Um, you know, add the email, add the phone, change the formula. These can all be pretty advanced abilities once you connect them all up. And especially when you've got dates and things like that in there, that could be quite extensive. But this is just a window into what the new AI properties fields can do. And there's three of them. I already demonstrated uh, one of them, but obviously what it's going to do is it's gonna give you two recommendations at the moment, summary and key information with custom autofill being the like the default or the way that you can just channel that. Like you can see here that this turned into a key information because I prompted it based on a list. So again, it'll learn from what your custom autofill is. So that was a little window into the Notion AI properties. Um, of course, it's very early days, but it has a lot of potential when it comes to being able to utilize more properties in Notion. I hope you found this video useful. If you're new here, do subscribe. And if you're interested, do check out Toolfinder. We are the place to find productivity tools. So I'd love to help you find that and join us on that journey um, to finding the best one for you. Thank you very much, folks. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Cheerio.